Welcome to Quail's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. Today I'm going to start by showing you the braid cardigan which I have finally finished. Front, side, back, Yay! I'm pretty happy with it. Finally done. A couple of notes. So this is the Bray Cardigan by Josie Mercier and it is from Interweave Knits Winter 2017. I'll show you a brief glimpse of the, the photo in the magazine. There she is. It's basically the same cardigan. I did make a few modifications. I used Patton's Rustic Wool in the colorway Midnight. I mentioned last time that it's rustic, so it has all kinds of guard hair sticking out of it. I don't know if you can see that, but it has all these white guard hairs sticking out of the yarn. And when I first started knitting with it, or when it's in the skein, it didn't bug me at all, but when I started to knit with it, I, it started to bother me that all those guard hairs were sticking in there. So I spent time picking those out, which I mentioned in the last episode. And uh, after blocking, it's, it's beautiful. It's, I, I really like the drape and the way it turned out after blocking. Um, I modified a little bit of the shaping to make it fit me better. So it has hourglass shaping in the front, but the back is a straight A-line shaping. You probably can't even tell. Um, and I also added, you can hardly tell that as well, I added four short rows in the back here to bring it down a little bit longer in the back than it is at the front. I also added secret pockets, which you can kind of see from the side. Those are not in the pattern, but I added them. Another uh, person on Ravelry had done that, and I liked the idea, so just added right along this uh, cable line right here. Just snuck that in there. So now I have cozy little pockets in the front. I added a cable detail up the arm, which is not in the pattern, which gave me a little bit of trouble because I guess this cable doesn't match, the row gauge of this cable is not matching the moss stitch on the arm, or what she calls the box stitch. So the cable is slightly longer than the box stitch. So it's causing it to pucker a little bit, but I don't think it's hugely noticeable. There, you can see it a little bit there, puckering. Also, it's puckering because the sleeves are too long. <laughs> I was shooting for a 17 inch sleeve and I ended up with a 20 inch sleeve. It confused me very much and I thought about it and I thought about it and what I decided happened was I did all the increases and when I was finished with the increases I should have had another inch to go before the armhole but when I laid it flat on the floor and I was measuring it it was always it was coming up short so I don't even know I didn't keep track of how how long past the increases I knit. But I do know it was kind of substantial and it may have been hard to believe it's a whole three inches, but I, I'm pretty sure that's where the extra length came from because I would lay the sleeve out on the floor and measure it and it was too short. So I just kept adding rows and rows and rows and then of course after blocking it, now it's too long. <laughs> So right now I'm cuffing the sleeves. I do, however, have plans of fixing that. I'm probably going to fix it the same way I 
showed last year when I had a cardigan that the sleeves were, they weren't too long, but they, I didn't like the cuff on the sleeves. So what I'll probably do is I will just cut and then work the ribbing down to the wrist. But for now, I'm just cuffing the sleeves and that works for now. So that's my, really my only disappointment with the sweater is that I made the sleeves too long. And of course I didn't know until after the whole thing was sewed together and blocked. So, shame on me. Anyway, I'll fix it. Other than that, I'm really happy. I'm happy with the, the fit, the way it turned out. Oh, one other um, thing I did change that I want to mention. I had noticed in the picture, I don't know how well you can see it, but the button band kind of flips out a little bit. You can just see it a little bit right here. And I saw that in the picture and I was suspicious. I'm like, hmm, even on the model, the button band is fl flipping out a little bit. So I did my, uh, I took my swatch and I worked button band samples on either end of it because I was de deciding how many stitches to pick up. I started with three out of four and then I ended up with four out of five and that worked perfect. But see on my swatch, you can see, especially the one side, really wants to flip up. The other dot side does a little bit as well. See that? How they're flipping up? And while that's a blockable feature, you can see from the photo in, in the magazine that it still really wants to flip up. So what I ended up doing, I know you can't see it here, but I did what's called a casing, which means I did the normal pickup along the button band, and then I knit two rows, and then on the back side, I picked up the pearl bumps on the reverse side and worked two rows on the back side. Then after I had both of those two rows on the front and two rows on the back knit, then I did a third row joining them together into one fabric. So it forms a casing around the selvage stitch. And then I did worked the, the normal button band after that. And that helps it to lie flat, especially with the blocking. So here, when I open it up, you'll see that it's not really going to flip out on me like it does in the photo. See, it's still, it lies pretty flat. It's not... You know, I can turn it out, but it's not flipping out. So I'm very happy with how that, that came out. And I used the buttonholes that I learned from Patty Lyons' Affinity Sweater. So we'll see how they wear. I like the, the top and the bottom, but the sides are really stretchy. So we'll see how it wears and if it if it stretches out or not. And then I got these buttons from Joanne Fabrics. They don't have a great button selection, but it's the best that's around here. And I always choose the buttons to go with the sweater and I get them after because I never am sure what I'm gonna do with buttonholes. So I don't wanna buy buttons ahead of time and then make the buttonholes fit the button. I prefer to make the buttonholes and then get the buttons to fit the buttonhole. So Joanne is what I have around here, so that's where I got the buttons. All right, I think that's it for the braid cardigan. Now I have a new sweater in my wardrobe. Okay, so since we last chatted, we have a new interweave knits that came out. This one is spring 2021. It has a bunch of shawls in it, which I'm not crazy about. 
and it has a few sock patterns. This one here is the one I like the best. But there are three sweater patterns that caught my eye and I thought I would share with you. So these are our spring sweaters. Most of them, if not all of them, are lacy. So this is the first one. This is called The Subtle Spring Tea by Rachel Brockman. I think it's very cute. I'm not sure that I would ever make it for myself, but I really like it. And the next one is the cover one, which probably the, the picture on the cover is a better photo. That's it. It's called The First Blush Pullover, and it is by Emily Ringelman. I like how it has this vertical element coming up, and it has, you can't really see the detail, but it has like, what look like kind of little buds coming up along the ribs. It's very cute. It does have a detail that I would not make, which is a huge scoop neck in the back. I would not do that. I would just do the back like a regular back. But I like the stitch pattern and I think it's a cute sweater. And then, this last one is called Vernal Awakening. Let's see if I can get a good shot of it. There we go. Vernal Awakening. And this one is an all over lace pattern that goes all the way up the sweater and I think it's really cute. I showed this one to my daughter and she liked it too. So, I am going to use the yarn that I dyed with the avocados for this Vernal Awakening sweater. It's even kind of, it's in the same color family. This one's more pink, but this one's more, well, this one is pink, but it's like gray pink. Whereas this is kind of a red pink, I guess. I don't know, anyway. I did a swatch. This is what it looks like. And it's this pattern. The entire sweater is this pattern. Just all over. It's very pretty. And it's actually easier than it looks. It looks, you know, involved and difficult, but it's not really. I was surprised when I started working it working it, I thought it would be harder. So I did three repeats across and two repeats tall. And now I just need to measure it and figure out what my gauge is. The yarn that was used in this is like a DK weight. And this is, I would call either a heavy fingering or maybe a sport weight. So my gauge is gonna be different. So I'm gonna have to do some math. But. So I have the perfect pattern for my yarn. This is great. And if I get it worked up, you know, it'll be good for spring. Last time I talked about the stretch the ride shawl or scarf that my knitting club was doing as a mystery knit along. Today, the last clue click came out. So I wanted to share with you the entire piece. All right. So this is, you can do, a, it's a choose your own adventure. So you can choose worsted or fingering, or you could even use sport or DK, anything between worsted and fingering. And you could do a narrow scarf or you can do a wide shawl. So this one, this sample is a narrow scarf done in worsted weight yarn. And this is the first clue, the second clue, Third clue, fourth clue, fifth clue, sixth clue, and the seventh clue. Each clue has an A and a B part. So these are 
mostly A clues with I think maybe one B clue mixed in. And it is a nice long, I forget how long it is, maybe seven feet, but you can wrap it around and tuck it under your coat or over your coat or whatever. You could even do it, do, it's probably long enough to do a double wrap. Let's try that. So I'll do it here, wrap it once, and then wrap it twice. Oh, not, maybe. Oh, I'd have to. <laughs> I could do it if I brought it up a little higher here. Let's make it like that. Okay, so one wrap. And a second wrap. There we go. Warm. <laughs> However you want to wear it. Or some people, let's see, what do they do? They bring it around and tuck it through like this. There we go. You can wear it like that. So that's one version of the stretch the ride wrap. And then I have another sample, which is the wide shawl done in fingering weight. Okay. So this is clue one, clue two, three, Four, five, six, and seven. So this is like 19 inches wide and it's like, I think, eight feet long. No, eight, yeah, it's like eight feet long. It's huge. And I'm not a, really a shawl person, so I'm not exactly sure how I would wear it. But my inclination would be to fold it in half and then go like this around the back and then around the front. So something big like this is probably how I would wear it. So even though it's fingering, because it's so big, double it up, I think it would be pretty warm. It's all wool, or at least I did it in wool. A couple other people did it in, one lady did linen, actually a couple people did linen. Like a more summery type of fiber. Hmm, yeah, maybe I would wear it like that. More as a scarf than a shawl. So that's that. Now that our mystery knit along is finished, the pattern will be available to the general public for sale on Ravelry. So I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested and you want to take a look. All the proceeds from the pattern sale go to our charity, which is called Stretch the Ride. It is a local charity here in the Pottstown, Pennsylvania area, and they give financial support to people who are going through cancer treatment. To them or their families, a little bit of extra money to help you stretch the ride. All right, and what am I working on now? Well, let me tell you. It's a big project. So this is called Kiki Mariko, and it is a rug pattern from Modern Daily Knitting. I had this pattern on my watch list, and I even added it to my queue last year 
thinking it would be a great stash buster. And then at the beginning of February, for Modern Daily Knitting, they decided to do the Kiki Mariko rug as their bang out a bang out a rug project for February. So I actually cast on February 1st and I've been working on it all month. As usual, I'm altering the pattern. I'm hoping that it will fit a very specific spot in my house. So I'm shooting for it to be 20 inches wide and 60 inches long. So I altered the stitch count and the length. I swatched, I didn't bring my swatches up with me, but I've had issues in the past where I've used yarn that I thought was feltable and it turned out not to be. So I made sure to swatch every yarn that I used in this to make sure that it felted. And I did a deep stash dive and pulled out all kinds of worsted. I have 10 colors here. Nine of them are worsted and one of them is bulky. So all of the worsted I am working double stranded. And as you can see, it's a zigzag pattern. And it's worked in the round. Here you can see where the steak is. Right there. So you work it in the round and then you felt it. And then after it's felted, then you cut the steak. So it's like steaking for chickens. Because if you're ever afraid that you're gonna cut your fabric and the yarns are gonna unravel, well, once they're felted, that's not happening. Now I am almost finished. I don't have much more left to go. So hopefully the next time I see you, it'll be finished and I can show you my rug. Look how tall it is. I want to knit it uh, 80 inches to make to get this. I'm hope I'm knitting it to 80 inches, hoping that it will felt to 60. So let me see if I can back up if I if you can see how tall it is. There, it's all the way to the floor. <laughs> So it's huge. <clears throat> and I had mentioned before when I was talking about needles, how I rarely use the large needle sizes. Well, this is the one exception when I do felting. Because when you felt, you want everything to be big and loose so that it felts easier. <clears throat> so yeah, I, I think that's kind of humorous. I was talking about how I almost never use the large needle slices, and here I am. This is a 13, which for me is ginormous, since I'm usually on a 6 or smaller. So that's what I'm working on now. And then I'll get started on this sweater for my daughter. So I have my, my ducks all in a row, and I'm getting going here. If you have any questions or comments, down in the comments field, put something down there. Let me know how you're doing, what you're working on, what you finished, how life is treating you. That's all I have for now. Take care. Bye-bye.